The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Welcome to Gen XYZ. Firstly, yes, uh, you possibly see a new face, that is me. I'm back after quite some time. Uh, I'd like to firstly thank Zai Daman, who has been taking this program forward, bringing in the weekly topics uh, that is pertaining to the youth and really breaking it down for everyone. And you know, really bringing in guests that, that we had some form of challenges that we had to face over the past few weeks. And Zai really did a good job in bringing to you those topics and giving you clarity as to how the youth should be facing it. And that is exactly what we're going to do with today's program as well. We're going to take that message forward and to do that we have a very special guest a guest that is very busy these days a person that has been in the limelight and has been bringing in facts figures who's bringing in what we should be doing as of now within this uh, pandemic period he is none other than the deputy inspector general ajit rohan he's also the media spokesperson for the police of sri lanka uh, sir thank you very much again for joining us i know this is a very tough time period your schedules have been uh, it must be very difficult my questions and our entire program we are going to tailor it to discussing something that you have actually come here to there and discussed a lot about how people on the roads, as in if you take the 2019 statistics, if I'm not mistaken, about seven to eight people uh, die on the roads and that could uh, every day, and that could uh, that deviates, we give or take about seven or eight people, and that could be one of us, one of our neighbors, someone that we know. Before I go into and we, we really discuss how this is affecting the youth and you know that the youth has this sort of passion to quickly get vehicles, to quickly go on the road, to move fast and all that, we really need to give, get your take on all of that. But before everything I want to ask you, now we are currently in a certain stage of a lockdown. We are, we are told to stay in our homes. What messages can we take from this lockdown to a new normal? to a new normal of traffic regulations, to a new normal of going back into the world with vehicles. What are the things that you will tell them to be aware of? Yes, uh, thank you for the invitation. And I think, uh, I mean, first time I'm yes, attending time. Uh, this program. Um, and I have been attending programs uh, on Derana for a long period, I think mm -hmm. almost now four or five years. So. Uh, that uh, especially I think today we are going to discuss the traffic issues, how uh, those issues related to uh, youngsters, our young blood. Uh, uh, before that, uh, as you mentioned, the now we are in a period where the quarantine uh, restriction order is being implemented. So during this period, uh, you have been asked to stay at home to adhere with quarantine rules and regulations. In addition to that, uh, the members of essential services are permitted uh, to move on road. So others, they should stay at home all the time until the quarantine restriction order is ceased. So it would be ceased on the 21st of uh, June as of today, but sometimes today. it might be changed. So how the general public, the youths, use vehicles? Uh, I think it is your question. Yeah. And especially uh, according to the, the COVID guidelines issued by the Director General Health Services. So all the times if you are moving in a public place, but you are not permitted to go out, sometimes you can go up to the nearest pharmacy. So you need to wear a face mask. So if you are driving a vehicle, if you are alone in the vehicle, you, you should not wear a face mask. But sometimes the polit my, police might stop your vehicle, they signals, and stop your vehicle. So at that time, you need to wear a face mask. But if you are going with your family members, let's say, who are in the same premises, so they should not wear, wear a face mask. But, you know, different type of paper. Let's say, now you are picking up your friend from place X and Y, from place Y. So then all the persons 
who are on board should uh, wear a face mask. All right. Um, something that I want to get to in now, as you said, if we are to open in the, on the 21st or like at one point when we do open, something that we can be mindful of is, uh, I think, something we have seen around the countries that vehicles are moving around as of now as well. But we can use this sort of relaxed period to be mindful of the challenges that people face on the roads, of seven to eight people dying every day, of uh, being more careful. My next question is uh, going to be, what uh, what is the current situation as well? Like before we went in lockdown, was was traffic by was it getting better? Was the situation something <coughs> that was you know it was a topic that was coming up as much? But we saw younger people dying. Like my my yes. next following questions are going to be based on those things whether yeah. there, there should be more regulation. What is the current situation like in respect of traffic? Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, I mean if we takes the statistics uh, of uh, traffic accidents. Mm. Uh, in the year 2019, approximately 3,000 persons uh, were killed in road traffic accidents. And in addition to that, 21,000 persons were injured. Out of that, approximately 7,500 persons were critically injured. Critically injured, it, mean, it means so they are permanently disabled. So they are confined to a, a wheelchair or crutches for their whole life. But in year 2020, uh, the number has been reduced because, I mean, after the, these restrictions we imposed on the 18th of March last year, so time to time uh, lockdowns came, country uh, was closed time to time, so therefore the numbers have been reduced. But again this year, this year, year 2021, uh, the total number of accidents uh, have been increased and generally eight or nine or nine to ten persons are killed in road traffic accidents within a period of 24 hours so this is the the critical situation this is the critical situation so these lives could be saved so now let's say if a person is having a cancer uh, so, I mean, some doctors, so they can, uh, they can cure it. But so general idea is that uh, it's, a, it's an incurable disease. It's an incurable disease. So, so I think uh, no one can stop it, the death. But these, these lives, so they have departed from this world forever, but it would have been saved. So it's just like a terrorism. Uh, it, it, these accidents, just like a terrorism, the road is road traffic system. If you are not able to, uh, if you are not able to adhere with uh, uh, traffic rules and regulation, it's just like a terrorism. Because you know, during ter uh, during this LTT terrorism period, uh, LTT terrorists they killed nine to ten persons regularly in explosions or or, or pistol group people. Uh, they shot so that type of incidents happen i mean now nine to ten peoples are killed in road traffic accident the similar situation is just like road terrorism mm -hmm. so therefore everyone should think of that and especially i think this uh, program is uh, uh, focusing uh, on especially the youth uh, the youths the youths so if we take the statistics the annual statistics in respect of the deceased of road traffic accidents and the victims means the injured persons uh, the majority is uh, elderly people, but but uh, elderly people majority in respect of the pedestrians, elderly people, but majority in respect of the drivers or the riders, uh, they are youngsters, the youth people, 18 to 35 or 18 to 40, so that is the age category, so they are becoming victims, the deceased and the injured person. Something I want to catch up on, like because uh, we have seen when you come on television, something that most media personalities appreciate about is you take a lot of time to stress on uh, the research aspect of this. You go behind and give reasoning to everything you say. Something I want to catch up, if you, if you can give us, shed some light on this. What do you think are the reasons, before we go into solutions and things we can do, what do you think are the reasons this is keep happening? That we have to keep discussing things like this. That is it because people now are are 
too much in a rush? Is it because the police aren't, they are not capable of enforcing the law? Is it because people don't listen? Uh, and one thing that we had, we've been even discussing this topic as well, is that younger children are getting vehicles very quickly. And my next question is going to be on licensing and how people get licenses. So where do you see, okay, this, these are the particular reasons that people are too much in a hurry or people are not careful on the roads? Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, this uh, traffic law, do you know that traffic law initially introduced by the British rulers in 1937? 1937 but the first vehicle was brought to Sri Lanka in 1904 but for a period of 31 31 years we didn't have a, a law because I mean we had only two three vehicles so uh, it was not needed but in 1937 uh, traffic ordinance was enacted by the British rulers but that the contents of that particular statutes were not compatible with our requirement so therefore that act was repealed and a new act was introduced in 1951 traffic motor traffic act now that particular act has been in existence for a period of almost now 70 years since since 1951 to 2021 so when the motor traffic act was enacted we had only 80,000 registered motor vehicles in the country. How many? 80,000. 80, As of today, it is 8.3 million, 83 lakhs registered vehicles in the country. So what is the majority according to this uh, vehicle, fleet, vehicle population? Motorcycles. So approximately 60% out of that motorcycles it me which means 45 or 47 lakhs motorcycles are moving here and there so who rides a motorcycle who the youth the youth the youth so as i mentioned earlier 10 deaths are reported regularly so out of that 7 or 8 diseased are riders so that is the vulnerability that is the vulnerability so the motorcycle riders and the pedestrians they are becoming the victims of road traffic accidents so that is the majority group and especially uh, the 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 motorcycle the the the, ri the riders so they are the victims and during this uh, covid period also i mean lockdown period also i have analyzed so regularly four to five fatal accidents are reported four to five but during i mean non-lockdown period during it's, lockdown it's period. ten <laughs> ten four to five or three to four mm. all are riders all are riders so sometimes a pedestrian uh, might be a disease but the majority let's say four fatal accidents happened yesterday so three are riders the deceased and one is sometime uh, a pedestrian so that is the situation in the country so therefore the motorcycle population is the highest population in respect of vehicles registered vehicles in the country it is 60 percent uh, it me which means uh, 46 tax or 4.6 million so therefore so they are the most vulnerable groups in the road mm. Uh, something that I have noticed that the police does very effectively actually is when someone crosses the road wrong or when quarantine uh, regulations are violated, they speak to the people. They either they are, they are arrested or they are told you know, these are, this is the issue that is happening and they're counseled and they're told to do an exam or you know, there is some process like that. Has that one, my first question is has that been effective and secondly can we implement that to get these riders or people that are more vulnerable, more aware of how to 
do this how to drive because one one argument that we have heard is you know we got these materials we got these items we got these instruments but we are not really aware of how to use them is that what you see how how do you counsel or uh, give advice to these people that make these so mistakes so what are the materials that you mentioned my by vehicles basically what i mean is like we got these very evolved vehicles very fast moving vehicles but we don't really know how to use them yeah the problem is this uh, generally being a youth so always you are trying to get more and more experiences mm. so that is that is the the nature mm. uh, but uh, the problem is the problem is if we takes uh, motorcycles or motor vehicles now we have i mean our our road system has been expanded widened so generally we have uh, a highway we have a highway and then we have observed that especially i mean i i i told you about this motorcycle accidents and apart from that so the motor cars so generally if we takes the statistics of highway accidents let's say we take 10 accidents or 100 accidents happen on our highway 90 out of 100 vehicles which met with accidents the drivers of those vehicles are youths because they are trying to get i mean experiences so the the speed limit is 100 so now i am a i mean person having three decades of experience in the police so let's say if if my wife or, or somebody or superior officer calls me okay you must come at 10:30 uh, i am i am on highway i am at uh, uh, dodangode exchange but it takes another uh, one and a half hours time so i cannot uh, come at 10:30 uh, i would say in that way but the youths they don't say okay 10:30 so they are trying to read the place by 10:15 so what happened they drive vehicles at an excessive speed so finally the vehicles are toppled so meeting with the accidents so that is the situation all right i think there's a lot more to discuss we'll take a very short break and we'll come back um, we are in a very important discussion with a very important individual who has been doing a big service to our country these days uh, the deputy inspector general ajit rohan be with us we'll be right back on jnx wise Welcome back. You are here with us on Gen X Y Z, where we discuss youth issues. And today we have a very special guest who has joined us for the first time, the, De- the Deputy Inspector General of the Sri Lanka Police, uh, Ajit Rohan. He's a lawyer. He's also the media spokesperson, and uh, he's a very good uh, resource for us to get to know all of this from an official source. Um, my next question: I, I really want to pick up on a lot of important things you just brought or brought to us and like explain to us. My next question is going to be on now this licensing. There, there, there are two aspects to this. One is how they get the license, and at what age children and the youth get it. And secondly, people that drive on roads without getting the license. Now, a blame could fall on the police also at this point to say, okay, look, are they checked properly? Isn't like that mechanism working? Is should should the police enforce themselves more? Is that is that what is required? What what are your thoughts on yeah. this? In terms of the provisions of the Motor Traffic Act. Sri Lanka police have been empowered by the law in order to enforce the traffic law but you know i mean as we all know if you are going to implement the the traffic law so we need the the support of other stakeholders so who are the other stakeholders in respect of uh, road safety sri lanka police the motor traffic commissioners department the ministry of transport the ministry of highways road development authority the ju- the judicial medical officers 
the judiciary the attorney general so they are the stakeholders of this particular system now you are, we are talking about driving licenses so the motor traffic commissioner is the sole authority who can issue driving license in respect of the provisions of the motor traffic act so he has the sole power and uh, i think uh, two decades ago we had a very uh, you know sometimes cumbersome system to issue uh, driving license now it has been uh, regulated and uh, but there are lacunas and lapses in the system but my view is being a police officer and i held the position of uh, traffic dig in the country for a period of one and a half years um, and being the dig legal uh, the system should be further streamlined uh, today now if we takes the examples of uh, scandinavian countries so getting a driving license is one of the most difficult task in those countries why because if you are driving a vehicle means you are playing with the lives of other people other people if you turn right or if you turn left so sometimes there might be 10 lives there injured killed therefore we have suggested the system to amend the motor traffic law to follow international standards the best practices in issuing driving license so the draft is being uh, uh, prepared at the moment so the act will be amended uh, the existing si system is not bad uh, it is in satisfactory order but we need to strengthen uh, the contents of the law along with international best practices uh, and international norms mm. uh, and apart from that uh, in our country if a person uh, reaches the age of 18 so he is uh, qualified to obtain a driving license and uh, if that particular person is above the age of 22 he can drive uh, even a, a passenger vehicle but uh, some countries have very strict guidelines in respect of uh, driving of uh, passenger vehicles so passenger vehicles means uh, so you need to have uh, not not uh, you need to have the physical capacity but not only the physical capacity but also you need to have the mental capacity to drive a vehicle uh, i think uh, you may have seen the video footages of uh, a recent uh, accident happened in passer area mm. the bus driver so the bus driver so what was his ambition what was his objective to reach the next destination as early as possible to reach the next bus stop as early as possible but he never thought of the road condition he never thought of the the speed he never thought of the the 65 persons who are on board nothing so his idea was to get collect more and more money so that mentality of the drivers that mentality of the applicants should be changed so therefore let's say the doctor could say he doesn't have diabetic he doesn't have pressure the the vision is okay but it is not sufficient the mentality of the driver is absolutely required to issue a driving license so this is my personal perception a a actually not my personal perception i have obtained um, certain information from uh, foreign systems so those are the best practices so we have to adopt those practices it's a very interesting point because one of my questions that i want to ask later on and something you have really debated with these relevant authorities is two very big stakeholders is the buses and the three wheels the and how they behave on the roads 
and you have suggested a lot of things. I think you said the same thing here today, uh, and within our programs as well, you have suggested this competition should be removed completely, and uh, that is how you know this regulatory, you know, and that I believe that discussion happened about three, four years ago. My question is, has that improved as of now? Now we see that it's a bit better given the lock, like the quarantine restrictions that are in play, but we still see that competition there. Can it, can it not be regulated in any other way? Can, is there other steps that are being taken? Yeah. Because a majority, even though you say it's the, the, the motorbikes that go, children go in buses, children go in three ways. They opt for these methods also when they don't have a vehicle at home. And if we can encourage, the, like that is what the state is trying to do, they're going to encourage people to use public transport. And in that kind of atmosphere, if the public transport isn't safe, then it becomes a bit of a problem. So what are your thoughts on that? Well. Uh, I mean, I forgot to mention um, earlier, you asked the, 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 the reasons for road traffic accidents, yeah. the causes. So number one, number one, uh, reckless and neglectful driving. So this is number one. Uh, uh, in 2005, there was an accident happened in Yang Almodar area. I think you were uh, very, uh, <laughs> yeah, little at that time. So the bus driver, a private bus driver, was trying to cross the railway line. Railway line, the, uh, the train was moving at that time. The bus collided with the train and approximately, I think, 30 persons were killed in the accident. So what was he, his intention? To get more and more, more and more passengers on board to collect money. That was his intention. He never thought of the lives of the people who were inside. No, not at all. So, number one, reckless driving, negligence. Number two, drunk driving. Number three, sometimes the, the mechanical faults of the vehicle. So, this is also very, very important. So, do you have a car or a, do you yeah, have? Yes, <laughs> then you have a car. <laughs> now, morning, morning. So before you get into the vehicle or uh, car, you need to check. You need to check the, the pressure of tires, whether the, the signal lights, the, the, the right one and the left one, uh, are function, they working? Function. The brake light, the reverse light. Uh, so you, now, nowadays, but earlier, when a driver was given the driving license, those, uh, it is called driving schools. Mm. So they gave those instructions. So before, now, nowadays only driving. Right. But those days, so those are ethics. So you need to check. So we don't know whether this, uh, the, the left side the signal, sometimes it might be working or not working. So then you think that it is in indicated in the switchboard. So now, that means it must be working. <laughs> working, but it doesn't work. So what happened? Then the collision. Yeah, it's a collision. So therefore, that type of uh, things is as a practice, the youth should should practice regularly. So before starting driving, they have to fulfill certain obligations. And apart from that, uh, the other thing is the the road conditions. Now, nowadays, uh, I think if you are moving in Colombo City, so there are drains there, pipelines, electricity lines, uh, sometimes uh, this uh, sewer lines there, repairs. But if you are trying to drive, a drive your vehicle in the night time, so you cannot see all these things, I mean, at excessive speed. So what happened? Then? You collide with them. Colliding and accidents happen. So you need to think of that. And apart from that, you know the, the natural, season, na natural reasons. So sometimes it might be raining, it might be raining, uh, then uh, the, the road is slippery. And apart from that, uh, uh, sometimes uh, wind is there, the dust is there. So therefore, every time uh, youth should think of uh, those uh, natural uh, disturbances. Uh, now, now let's say uh, we are uh, entering uh, into the highway from Kottawa. It's okay. Uh, 
no rain the sun is there so sometimes when you are moving fast very fast so in seconds it might be raining so the the road might be uh, sometimes uh, uh, the, the 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 road condition could be changed so therefore all the time uh, you need to think of that something uh, that we i think you touched on this as well but i want to bring that bring that question back because in a time period where we are trying to tell people to you know take public transport where do you think that all fits in this do you think as time proceeds we will get safer the public transportation system will get safer or should there be a more more intervention from either the government or like from other state parties to make this safer because we are trying to get the youth who primarily are you know in the homes who are trying to go to schools at one point they'll have to use this public transportation yeah, but in our public transport system there is a competition hmm. competition between the ctb buses and ctb buses competition between private town buses and private buses and competition between ctb buses and private buses why because of money because of money so as long as this competition remains so our public transport system it not uh, safer one mm -hmm. so what are the actions that we need to take i think you may have gone to foreign countries europe uh, australia so they have a system the gps system at the bus stop so there is a clock or there is a board automatically it is uh, updated next bus okay now time is uh, let's say 5 o'clock okay next bus 515 then it is indicated okay in 3 minutes time bus coming in 2 minutes time and stop then next bus 545 there is no competition at all it doesn't matter there are buses owned by individuals there are buses owned by government uh, 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 sri lanka transport board but there should be a timetable and there should be a gps monitoring system so if you are able to i i think uh, this matter has been discussed uh, at the transport ministry and with all stakeholders so if you are able to implement this particular system so definitely we can overcome this problem otherwise this problem remains as it is all right i think there's a very good place to take a very short break and we'll come back and we'll discuss exactly where we are right now the solutions that have been brought and how we can move forward here with genex wise and stay with us Welcome back to Gen X Y Z. We are with uh, DIG Ajit Rohana, who is a media spokesperson for the police, and he's also a lawyer. He has been with us for quite some time, bringing in facts and figures during this very challenging time period for this country. Um, my next question now, I think you would understand that the entire program is geared towards the new normal, like us reopening, going back to the country. How we can take a lot, we can learn a lot from this uh, time period. my uh, next question is going to be on education and primarily like as i as i asked before from you about you know when when someone crosses the road wrong or when they they're driving either drunk they are counsel they are told you know this is what needs to happen should this form of education or are you taking steps to get bring this form of education to another level maybe to schools maybe to even mandating it at uh, licensed schools as you mentioned very uh, this is the first time i actually also heard about it is ethics are taught to people at driving schools and some of these information is f you know removed flowing down are those the reasons that you know primarily result in 8 to 10 people dying every day on the road should can we make this change from education yeah it's a it's a it's a part of the it's a part of the system but uh, if we takes the the examples from foreign countries how they have reduced road traffic accidents so number 1 number 
fines and punishments that is number one everywhere elsewhere in the world how i mean it is one of the the key elements of eliminating or minimizing road traffic accidents number one so number two use in the modern technology in order to monitor the vehicle movements number three as you mentioned education awareness programs and the the updating the lation mm. issuing okay. system mm. so these are the three uh, main points mm. so number one what i said was fines and punishment in our country now we have increased fines in respect of five offenses up to 25000 so what are the five offenses speeding excessive speed then driving without a driving license driving without a driving license then driving without an insurance certificate so crossing the railway gates with neglectful acts then the the fifth one is if the owner has given his vehicle to a person who doesn't have a valid driving license the owner is liable for a fine of 25000 so there are other offenses in the motor traffic act a very i mean 200 uh, 2000 100 1005 so these are the main offenses why we categorize these offenses so the common common ignorance and neglectful neglectful acts have been involved in these offenses and apart from that the second uh, the second thing what i mention is uh, monitoring system uh, using modern technology so in 2009 we have introduced a special law called demerit mark system mm. have you heard of demerit heard mark of system. system so this is very very important the monitoring system to reduce road traffic accidents so what is this demerit mark system now let's say i think uh, if you look at your driving license so there is a small chip there small yes. yeah data you can store data now let's say you are going to candy from colombo today you cut the line at grand pass so you are given a spot fine you can pay it it's uh, let's say uh, 200 uh, sorry 2000 rupees so you can pay but not only the payment of that fine but also we have a, we, we we have not uh, established that system so far but it is in our legal system so you are driving license is insert, in, inserted to a machine mm -hmm. and those marks are added you are given 8 marks then again you are driving okay you paid you paid it and going towards candy at nitembo junction you are driving your vehicle against red light mm. then you are given another 10 marks so within within a period of one year if you have obtained 22 marks your driving license is automatically suspended for one year mm. then you cannot drive on you cannot drive so you can now now uh, now you have paid 10 no 100 spot fine tickets so it is not appeared in your driving license so no one can say that you are a repeated uh, offender so it's not there so that system and cctv cameras will monitor the situation 
and they give you uh, warning tickets or spot fines and it should be legalized so that is the second one so third one is as you mentioned this awareness program it is very very important self discipline discipline and uh, all the other best practices so those are the, the those are the three main elements that have that has been uh, utilized by uh, i mean many countries in order to curtail road traffic accidents mm -hmm. um, we have about uh, four minutes left and i want to give you a little bit of time to really elaborate on my last question is now people are going to go onto the roads in a few days uh, as i said we, as we began the program and <coughs> even between what we decided was we can actually learn something we can take something new when we go to the roads now uh, and you again as you uh, quoted your 30 years of experience on the force um, supporting the police and you know you, you have seen the ups and downs and you know you have seen what offenses are like on the on on sri lankan soil on what like what the most offenses are done in on sri lanka and as uh, the traffic dig you would have had a better insight into this as well my question I'll, I'll try and keep it brief is what message would you give to the youth who will now go and take their first time their first time driving their first time to get a license their first time on the roads uh, wh what are the things that we have forgotten what are the things that we should bear in mind what are the things that we should uh, learn more about what are the things that people have really lost their lives trying to you know show to the youth that we may not remember as of now what is that message that you will give to the youth uh, as in the position that you are in so the 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 first thing that they should think is the road is for everyone not for me not for an individual so many youths when they get into the vehicle or sitting on the driving seat they think that all roads are mine so that concept the mindset sure. yes so they need to think of that number 2 in the road system there are three parties the drivers the passengers and the pedestrians so sometimes you are the driver but in your vehicle your friends are there then out of the vehicle other i mean pedestrians pedestrians are there other vehicles are there so all the times you need to think of that when you are driving when you are driving the vehicles your hands are placed on the steering wheel so you must think of driving i am driving the vehicle so you should not think of the songs or you should not i mean try to answer the phone or watch movies the now uh, i'm most of the vehicles i quit uh, with uh, television yeah televisions <laughs> many things so uh, you need to concentrate on the obstacles the road condition everything everything so that conscious the mindfulness it should be there so that is my advice uh, before we finish i think we have a bit more time i want to ask you today are we in a better place like before maybe like even when you came to there in a few years ago to discuss this uh, same subject are we do you think we have hope in going to a future where this will reduce where we can actually you know see some change or should we take a bigger effort should people because um, something that we saw these days was everyone started scolding the authorities and everything for the current spread of covid-19 we have a tendency to pin the blame on other people but should we be taking this in the general public should be taking more responsibility per into this and mostly the youth who are taking vehicles who are going to the roads next should they be taking more responsibility do you think we are going to a better place is my question last question yes uh, now as as we all know the world health organization has expressed its views that the pandemic would be remain till uh, 2024 2024 for an, for a period of uh, 
almost three, another uh, three, three, three years. years. So we need to live with COVID-19, but preventing it. So therefore, wherever you go on your vehicle, along with your car, your motor, motor bicycle, ban. So first thing you should do is you need to take preventive actions in respect of COVID-19. Number two, you need to think of the road safety. It's very, very important. Road safety, very, very important. Check the vehicle before driving, the mechanical faults, whether there are mechanical faults or not. Headlights, are they working? Wipers, all these things. Mm -hmm. So these are the instructions that uh, Can I could give. And finally, again, I emphasize that. Think every time. This road belongs to everyone. All right. I think that is a very good place to end our discussion. I thank you so much for spending this time with us, DAG Ajit Rohan. He's a very popular figure uh, these days, and he's doing a big service. We thank you for that service as well, and we give you, we, we hope that you have the strength to continue on. Uh, that is all from us here for this week's uh, episode of Gen XYZ. Join us again next week when we bring together another contemporary topic that is affecting the youth. Uh, thank you for joining us this, uh, this week. I'm Daniel Tanwasan, and have a great day, have a great week. Uh, stay safe, and let's listen to the instructions that are being given by these officials and come out of this pandemic together.